adventure. going to do another section of the Connecticut River Paddlers Trail. We did last year we did the lower section from Woodsville south and now we're starting up here at Moore Reservoir in Littleton. We're working our way south towards where we started last time in Woodsville. So we have a pretty good group with us today. There's going to be three boats and six of us. Some of these guys you've seen before. I think everybody you've seen before. Except Rob, right? Except Rob, right. We have a new new adventurer. My brother's a roommate, college roommate, Rob. He should be very entertaining, I promise. And this time we uh, have a pretty heavy loadout. We have coolers and all sorts of fancy, all the, all the luxuries this time. I brought the big blue behemoth, my big Mad River canoe. I didn't want to take my cedar strip or my ultralight horn back because I, the water level, we haven't got much rain. It's going to be pretty low. And we're going to be bouncing off a lot of stones and rocks. So. Yeah, we're just waiting for those guys to get down here, and uh, we'll be underway, so I'll get with you in a minute. So like I promised, a new adventure buddy, this guy right here, he's lathering himself up with sunscreen. Say hi, Rob. Hi. There he is. And here's Cody. Last time you saw him, he was making us some venison stew. Ben's already drinking beer. It's going to be a good trip. It's going to be a good trip. Be with you in a minute. And here... We go. Shove. Yeah. You got everything. Ooh, comfy. It's not a race, guys. Let's go. It's a race. It's not a race. I always want to do a canoe race. <laughs> We're waiting for them anyway. Ben's probably drunk and about to spill over. Who knows? All right, let's get this show on the road, huh? Yours looks a lot less uh, seaworthy. We'll find out. They're kind of big guys. Stevenson campsite, mile 130. We're at mile 118. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll show you. Hey Jay, this spot over here on the left, if that site is full, we might be able to camp over there. I do. I have a hammock. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. I don't know if you heard me, but I thought right over there, if that site's full, we could probably find a spot over there. I haven't seen a lot of houses or drives or anything. My plan was to have an easy day because I didn't know how long this was all going to take. And I didn't want to be rushed and pulling in here at 9 o'clock at night. So, seeing if it's a potential campsite in case the other one's taken. It's pretty nice right on this point. What do you guys think? Ten bucks, there's a fire ring up there somewhere. So the only real reason I had them come over here is so they would slow down so I could drink my beer. Because we have like no distance to go today, so. What do you think, fire ring up there? Looks like somebody's been here, huh? Oh yeah, deer? Some deer prints, some people prints. There's a fire ring. Doesn't look like anybody's been here in a while. 
Nobody's been here in a while, but this is a really nice spot. We could probably stash the boats. Yeah. Got a little place to sit. Looking out at that. Pretty nice. <laughs> Time for beer number two. How many have you had so far? Just one. Just one? Well, you two. Something else. No. <laughs> this is two. Well, you just started. <laughs> I've already got mine open, thank you. What about you guys? Don't tell me you're only one beer in. Uh, I'm on two. Atta boy. I only brought enough for like three for each day, so I'm, I mooched off a of bend. So I'm going to mooch okay, off a bend go. again. <laughs> That's the landing up there. Yeah, yeah, that's the boat launch. So it looks like we're arriving at our first portage in the reservoir. I don't know what we've got ahead of us. I think on the other side they said it's a third of a mile. I don't think it's quite as far on this side, so we'll see what happens. Land ho! Okay. Sally O. Oh, oh, we gotta get it recentered. Glad we brought these wheels for Big Blue here. The trick is balancing the boat, right? Hey, big hill. Push! False alarm. We were on the wrong side of the dam. The map shows that there's a portage this way and that way. The campsite is on this side of the river, on this side of the water, but apparently the access point is actually on the other side of the reservoir. You get back into the Connecticut River, go down a ways, and then paddle back across to this side to get to the primitive campsite. I imagine they do that just to keep people away from it, so it's less of a party site. But uh, anyway, lesson learned. So. We're paddling back across the reservoir. It's getting late, so I'm glad we started early. Let's see what we can see. So I feel like a real dummy. We found Portage, and it's very well marked by a giant sign that says Portage Trail. Right here. Oh well, we didn't know, but we found it. We're loading up. Getting ready to portage back over to the river, cross back over the river, and hopefully find a campsite. Jason had a bunch of ticks on him. Yes, that was scary. Oops. Very, very many ticks. I think I had one. Ben and Ed. So these guys are headed. I got a little grabby. I'm sorry. Ben and Cody are getting set up, and uh, we'll be taking up the rear. Best thing about a portage trail is the downhill. Most of this looks like it's downhill. Very happy about that. Around the dam we go. So Jamie's taking the wheels off. We gotta slide it down this stairwell right here. Hold on one second. Oh, okay, never mind. It's a pretty big dam right here. But we're thinking that the campsite should be just around the corner over there, past those bass fishermen. So these guys are already in the water. We're gonna send this down the steps and I'll get with you in a minute. Back on the water. Here we go. Have your paddle. That was fun, huh? Absolutely have your paddle. It was a little tricky. All you do is switch paddles. There you go. Perfect. Okay, let's go camping. We got a little turned around, but if you're ever doing this trip and you're here, make sure you stay on the right side of the reservoir. That's where the portage is, despite what the map says. So that might save you some time.
So we found the site, but somebody's already there. So we're gonna go inspect, see if there's any other room. All right, you ready? We'll see what's going on. Yeah, somebody's already there, but yeah, yeah, we, we could hear them the there might be some more room. It does look like a second landing here. It does. We got quite a bank here. Alrighty. <laughs> Looking like a little mountain climbing after what we've done. It actually looks promising. Let's see what's up here. Maybe there's room that we can camp. Hammock maybe. Oh yeah, here's the site. There's more than one site. See what I mean? Let's go see what these fine folks. Oh yeah, we got another tent site here too. Definitely doable. Let's see what we got. So I just talked to the neighbors. They're here for a party and weekend. So I don't know if we want to stay here or not. We're gonna see what else is around. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you come out here on the weekends. So, but you know what? We can stealth camp too, so. I'll go let those guys know. Okay, so this is the deal. Yeah. So there's a really big group there. Yeah. And they all want to party all night. And they're thinking they're going to be partying until like 3 in the morning. And there's probably six tents up there, like big party tents. Yeah, yeah. So that means no sleep and then a 15-hour day the next day. 15-mile day. 15-mile cool. day down and try to find a spot so the other thing is yeah why don't we just cross over there might be there's some softwood trees right there i can see you know softwood trees are good because then we're away from you know all this understory and stuff yeah. usually there's pine needles the only other thing there's a trail over here behind jason that leads in but we're going to be so close to them, them i think we should be away from them too yeah. so I'm fine with stealth camping. I don't know about you guys. Love it. Let's do it. You know, this ad disadvantage, we don't have a fire ring or anything, but we can always build one. So is that our executive decision? Yeah. Try to find another spot. All right, I'll check the map because I've got, there are some areas on here that are state owned. Yeah. It's marked on the map so I can find if, you know, see what's ahead of us. Maybe there's a little island or cove we can find. Well, it's almost 5.30. Hopefully we can find something kind of close. This it doesn't look bad. Huh? No. So, we do like the beach spot, but we consulted the map, and according to the map, there's an island down further. It's about a mile away, a little bit more. It's... 5 30 so it's not real late yet so we're going to go down there and we're going to try see what it's about see if it's another place that we could camp if not we'll probably be back here at this beach nice little beach but we figure we'll at least check it out so we finally found a place to camp it's not the most ideal spot but stealth camping seldom is so anyway we got the boats beach down there down over the bank we have kind of a little hemlock ridge we're staying on as you can see in the background i've got my tarp and my bug net just an air mattress and a whole blanket that's all i'm doing tonight i like to stay under a tarp i just like that open air feeling um i've done tents in the past nothing wrong with tents especially in bad weather but when i can get away with tarp camping that's that's my that's the i love doing it so i'll show you what i got here so as you can see i use my paddle to help Pull that tarp open a little bit just to give me a little bit more room underneath and under here i've got the friendly swede bug net my air mattress and in that dry bag is my uh, wool blanket which i haven't quite got out yet but i figure i'm gonna wait to open up that wool blanket because i don't want all the creepy crawlies getting in there the bug net should keep most of them out but i don't want any surprises 
and behind me is I've, I've got uh, Cody's tent. So this is what Cody's up to, right here. Here's Cody's tent. And the rest of the guys are down there. You can make out there, most of those guys are all hammock camping. There's Ben way down there. So, yeah, not a bad spot. Hemlock Ridge, first night. It looks like those sneaky guys have already got a fire going. You have a fire going already? Been going for half an hour. Didn't even invite me for dinner. Rude. So rude. I think he's got your beat for the food today too. Oh yeah. He makes what I think he's gonna make. I don't want to get away. I am eating some of Jeff's bologna. Oh, very nice. Yeah. What have you got? This is just really crappy store-bought pasta salad, but it's cooler is the main event. He's getting the fire going so he can cook the real food. Ooh. I don't think it's too bad of a spot. No, man, this is fine. There's We've been in worse. food and fire. It can't be that bad. Right. I'll go get a bunch more wood. Maybe if we all do wood collection, we can get a whole bunch stockpiled for dinner. Yeah. What do you think? I think so. So, slight change of plans. I was up there setting up my tent and I was getting my wool blanket all set and uh, felt something crawling in the back of my ear and I had four or five ticks, deer ticks all over my head, climbing on the brim of my hat. I said, nope, time for me to get in the hammock. I'm getting off the ground, getting in the air. So that's what I did. Here it is. I have just a basic wool blanket tarp and uh, I'm off the ground just the way I want to be we got busted we were trying to stealth camp and we got busted by the owners well, and it was all his fault <laughs> Green. Green. I'm just kidding I'm just kidding he was a pretty cool dude we asked him down to see if he wanted to have a beer he said we were we were cool don't worry about it we explained to him that the Paddling sites were full with prior years and we saw a little beach in a flat spot. We decided we'd crash here and he's totally cool with it. You can hear him up there right now mowing the lawn. So, yeah, we got some burgers on. You guys already ate, didn't you? Did. Yep. Didn't even wait for me. Well, sorry, nice. What is it, 8 o'clock? It is, <laughs> yeah. 8.41. Yeah, this is on you this siren. <laughs> I don't blame him for being hungry. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Ready for breakfast? What's that? Ready for breakfast? Dehydrated scrambled eggs? Yeah. I'm ready for coffee at least. Yeah, I need some. <laughs> well, dehydrated coffee too. Oh, yeah. But it has a fancy name on it. It says Starbucks on it, so it not, must be good. It's not Nasty Fay. <laughs> it's not Nasty Fay. But I'm sure it's made by the same people even if it says Starbucks on it. <laughs> so it's about 8.15. On our second day, we just left our stealth camp campsite, which wasn't so stealthy because the neighbors or the owners came and visited us, but they were totally cool with it, which was nice. Thank God. Yeah, we've got about 15, well, a little under 15 miles to go today. We're thinking maybe 14. What, what, what do you think, Jamie? We did about an extra mile, maybe. Yeah, about that. About an extra mile or so. 
So we do have a couple good portages today, one's a third of a mile long, and we're talking about class three rapids, but the water level is pretty low. We haven't got much rain, much like the rest of the country. So we'll see how that goes. And we're thinking about maybe stopping into town and trying to get some ice for our coolers. So yeah, it'll be a pretty good day. What did you guys think of last night? It was good. good. Slept pretty well. The deer blowing in the middle of the night was kind of terrifying. Oh, that's right, the deer. <laughs> it's more like a scream. <laughs> no, Rob. Rob was convinced it was a windigo. Uh, I was. I was sitting there. My heart was beating. I was like, Oh my God. You know what the best part was when the neighbors said, "Hey, you, uh, you guys are camping in." Wiccan Indian territory, and there was an old buried graveyard right up above you. Yeah, you <laughs> After you walked away, because you were the first one back down the hill. <laughs> oh, I gotta get my bird. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Comfort Dam in front of us. We've been uh, battling for almost 9:30. We started about. Eight, nine and a half or so, just a little under. Got the portage up here ahead of us. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired. Have a snack, have something to eat. Start our big portage. Here we are, Portage Trail. About to land. Pretty big dam. Whew. We're here. <laughs> Let's go for a walk. Down the hill. God, those guys are already around the corner. So when they say this portage is steep, look behind me. It is steep. It is dumb steep. Yeah. You see the dam? There's no way you can wheel it because this thing, if it got up ahead of steam, there'd be no stopping it. Steep enough, huh? Yes. So we gotta sneak through there. Just, uh, what Rob and I did is we got close to that path. We just dragged it through the most challenging short portages I've ever done. But it's only 10.30, we're still making pretty good time. So, here we go. Let's see, it's almost 11 o'clock. As my wife would say, first one of the day. Cheers, everybody. Gotta love adventures. We got a couple little rapids up here, up ahead of us. Our first ones of the trip. We're gonna see what happens. You wanna go around them? Okay. We'll try to avoid the rocks. See this side of it. That one, Amy. Ooh, one rock. You gotta, you gotta be the guy, so pay attention. Holler right or left. Got another stretch of them up here ahead of us. This one looks a little bit more serious. Stop, 
Huh? Anything in front of us? Hello, Three Rivers. <laughs> That's what it says on the side of your canoe. Oh, does it? Yeah. I don't know why you can get that boat long. A set of stairs that we got to drive. Set of steps. Well, we never said it was going to be easy. Mikendo Falls Dam. So that's what that was. And that's at mile 134. Oh, I see. So and that's these one. These, these next few right, items. so we have a mile. That's 135. See? So we're shooting for one of those. One of those, the next three. We'll keep an eye out and we'll stay at. Check out right there. Yeah. Next. Oh, yeah. The osprey? Yeah. A cool osprey nest up here. Just you see it? There's a osprey nest on top of there. There he is. I don't know if this little GoPro can pick him up, but. Jamie's going to get attacked. Lunch. We have about between one and two miles to our first uh, island campsite. If that's all, we have two more to choose from, so we're hoping we'll be able to hit one of them. But, yeah, we're getting pretty tired anyway. I think we're all ready to call it a day. About two o'clock. Probably be there by three, maybe a little before, I don't know. But it's nice to get into camp. A little ahead of time because that way you can time, have time to get wood together and set up your camp and just chill out, right, Jamie? Yeah. Plus, it just started to sprinkle a little bit. Don't know if this might turn into something. So hopefully we can get camp set up before it starts to rain. Here's the spillway right over here. I think we found our campsite for tonight. Straight ahead of us on this island. I see a signpost ahead. Cool pathway going up into the woods. I have a question. Do you fix live on islands? I hope not. It'd be nice to have a tick free night tonight. We'll see though. So we made it to the campsite. I'll tell you what campsite it is in a minute. I forgot what it, what the name of it was, but I'll show you what it looks like. Is this an awesome campsite or what? Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> Me too. But I'm happy. Now, if somebody starts mowing the lawn at eight, I'm gonna be sick. It's very cool. <laughs> Vermont River Conservancy. A good karma box. Suggested donation. Oh, cool. All right. So they're asking us to donate. Why not? That's a pretty cool site. We have, I'll show you, we have chairs. Something to sit on. A really decent fire pit. There's even wood supplied. A picnic table. Beautiful view of the river. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So, I just gotta find a spot. 
These guys, most of these guys are gonna hammock, I think. I'm gonna tent. Yeah. I think I'm gonna tent right here. You and I right here. Yeah, I'd rather not sleep in a hammock if I don't have to. So, nice flat spot, tick free. Tick free spot. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna be. So, we're in the process of setting up all our stuff. Ben's over here, he's got a nice view. Got his favorite tarp, his chill gorilla. He swears by the thing. He's got a much fancier one, but he just can't bring himself to use it because he's kind of got a sweet spot for this one. But this is Ben's setup. So yeah, what do you got going on here? Oh, well, I just got my hammock. Nice. Bug net built in. I believe oh, yeah. it used to be your hammock, sir. Yeah, it was, at and one then, time. Uh, my chill gorilla tarp and then my Guideline. I got the guideline way up because got the it mounted are... into this big basswood here. Yeah. And then over to that spruce. Yeah. No, big big pine. Big yep. pine. He's got it. He couldn't quite reach around, so he's just on a little branch right there. But yeah. supposed to get some rain tonight, so that'll work. Nice. Yeah. Jason and Rob found the best spot. Look at that, way up there in the willy wax. Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. No. Hi. And Jamie, after seeing my Defender tarp, decided he needed one, so he bought one. This is your first trip with that Defender tarp, isn't it? Yep. So, and Jamie also has one of my old hammocks. <laughs> but, you know, check out Jamie's setup here. Defender tarp. AquaQuest, putting on your bug net. Yep. Very nice. In case the bugs come bug me. And Cody's over here making lunch. Yeah. Bratwurst, right? Yep, beer brats. Beer brats. Where's mine? Just kidding. In the bag. <laughs> now we're gonna hike way up the hill. Oh wait, before I hike up the hill, I gotta show you Cody's setup. So here's Cody's setup. Just a basic Eureka tent. Pretty nice though, because we got a, there's our campsite, our fire pit. View of the Connecticut. And then over here, I'll try not to spin you too fast. It's my setup. I did some tent origami. Same thing, defender tarp. Set up in the tent position. And uh, I used a couple canoe paddles. Just so I would have the most amount of room in there. Pretty roomy. I could easily sleep two people in there if I wanted. I got a wool blanket so in that dry bag. So I haven't dug that out yet. I'm going to wait until things get a little closer to evening. I want to keep the I want to keep the bugs out of there if I can. So, oh my god, that's a hill. No, I'm glad I didn't go up there. Holy crap, look at this hill. Look at that. Okay. I guess I got to try to boogie up this hill. It's like straight up. It's like mountain climbing. Whew. Holy cow, that's steep. Hey look, piece of chaga. Piece of chaga right there, chaga tea later maybe. Wow, you guys are up here, this is a climb. Holy crap. Look at this, they have their very own fire pit. Hasn't been used. Probably because nobody wants to climb that damn hill. That look how nice this is. What a view. Very nice. So, yeah, Rob's got the Chill Gorilla too. Chill Gorilla Blue. Chill Gorilla Blue. Yeah. And then Jay has got the same thing. He's got a AquaQuest Defender. You like that new thing, huh? It's nice. Looks like I'll be able to test it out tonight. You don't have to worry about that thing leaking. Got it set up in the uh, diamond formation. Which is kind of one of my personal favorites. That diamond formation. Sorry. Sorry, moving the camera around. So, uh, yeah. Should be a good night. I still don't remember the name of this site, but... 
it's on an island and I promise I will tell you I'm just trying to keep the suspense up this is cool so this morning we started like right in here somewhere because back in here was that tent site that the people had so we were camped just in here somewhere we came across here early this morning there was that third mile portage that great big steep thing right there this is the fast water we hit then we got in here to the the nine islands we took a little brief beer break there came around the corner we passed Stevenson campsite and that was way off to the side we came through here to stay on island after that we worked over through past the bridge access around here and if you can see this is that last dam we did that was pretty cool that was really short and then we worked our way down through here and this is where we are tonight I told you I'd tell you what it was so that's where we are right on that island and then tomorrow we're going to continue along we have one more portage on Reigate Dam past the Hydro Falls and then all the way back to White River Woodsville this is where we're parked we're at this launch right here so that's what we did going so we can have breakfast. Shut it off. Thank you, sir. Day three. Here we go. Hi hey guys, you're on camera. Wave Hi. your camera. <laughs> so we're leaving the site, had breakfast and packed our stuff. Very humid, hot last night. Made for tough sleeping. But we've got seven miles to go today to our truck and home. So we do have one big well, not big portage, but quarter mile portage up ahead. That's kind of the toughest part of the day, but after that, it's pretty much free sailing, so free paddling. And we'll see how the day goes. So we finally found the portage trail. It's awful close to the dam barriers, see? We're getting a little nervous because we're not supposed to go past those, but the trail is right here. There it is. I kind of wish that that sign was further out where you could see it, but if you're ever here, where it is, it's right near these buoys. Let's go. So this is Rygate Dam campsite right near the falls little tent platform kind of a makeshift lean-to 
does have a fire ring. Bunch of grills. Got to carry the boats up. The portage trail is up that way. We're going to throw the wheels on there, but as you can see, it's a little bit steep, a little bit rugged to get up here. But yeah, so we're near Mikindo Falls or something like that was the name of the place. But the portage comes in well before the dam. I'll show you here in a minute. We've got the barriers, and you can see the dam isn't until way over there. And the sign, the sign wasn't very good, was it, guys? You've got to kind of go around the corner to see it. Yeah. Yeah, it has been. Well, obviously, there's the sign, but it's kind of on a blind corner. You can't see it. First, you see these barriers, and you start getting nervous. So you got to kind of shoot around the corner really sharp and then land and here's the sign so if you're planning on doing that trip that's something to look for yeah last portage last portage last let's portage. get it done everybody faster water coming up see how we do the map said you can be careful because the currents have a tendency to hit boats so hopefully that doesn't happen to us sorry to film it <laughs> keep battling we don't want to get belly hung with them the other guys are going to go up and get the cars and trucks and come back and get us and we're going to head home so thanks for coming with me on this adventure my friends and i please like share and subscribe if you want to if you like watching this kind of stuff i'll see you on the next one maybe jamie will come too